and we'll be giving you more details as we get closer to that. But it does look like, folks, that we are going live, so let's get directly into it. Once again, Vega Squadron taking on Team USSR here at the Star Ladder Pro Series. Interesting, Lamp goes for the dually buy up here in the first round. And they're going to position two of these guys inside the apartments. Unfortunately, this is going to be detached from the majority of the take coming out from Team USSR. As they're mostly rolling in back over here towards the A site now. And already there is actually going to be JR picking up one player here. Going to be able to take him down. The rest of the team's still moving in. But with those smokes, they can't really see all that much. And a couple more kills already going by their way. That's Kashander and Latro. JR finding an additional one too. It is not the best take, unfortunately, here for the Polish team as they roll their way in. Reitz is going to be the last one alive. He gets dropped. They did manage to get the plant at the very least. So it's not the worst situation in the world. But but definitely could have gone a lot smoother with all things being considered. Vega Squadron, however, very good hold on that A site. They do let the plant end up sneaking through, but good recovery from it. And again, in terms of kills, they were almost flawless with that round. They shut it down very, very fast indeed, not letting Team USSR getting through. And now this is going to go into our next round where Team USSR is actually going to go for the bit of a buy-up here, but with that plant coming in, if they do take things as light as they do right now, this could leave the option open to go for just the direct buy-up on the third round to force things directly into the play very, very quickly. So, taking a look, of course, at those buys, not really all that much being brought into play as we kind of expected. They've got five smokes, so it's going to be another confusion play, probably just to get that plant in. We do see a Deagle sitting over here on the speed, but beyond this, it's mainly P250s, and Joker is actually just stuck completely with a Glock over there as well. So, Lamp's actually going to toss that Held it back a little bit, so it's actually, it actually works out great because there's a smoke that comes over the T's anyway. So it's going to hold the back for a little more. And there you go, two kills to start it off. We did see Murr getting hit up just a bit there, but he's still holding on quite fine at 66 HP. And unfortunately, this second round, not going to go very far at all. Vega Squadron setting it down very, very quickly with two points on the board already here. So that will take us into this round where Team USSR do have the option to go for a buy. But unfortunately, the money's still going to be a little bit too low. Those AKs wouldn't really have armor and whatnot behind it, considering they did go for a couple buy-ups with, uh, with pistols and or with a uh, utility sitting behind it there in the previous round. So that would have sort of segued them outside of it. And no plant that time either. Had they gotten the plant, probably would have re-enabled the potentiality to go for it. But just doesn't really end up working out in the long run of things. So they won't go for it this time. They do again buy the five smokes. So uh, obviously relying very much so onto that for these takes onto both of the both of the sites. But... So far, things, of course, not really panning out the way they wanted it to. And this nade going to come in and just do a whole load of damage, as we can already see. Rates brought down to 42. Uh, Pejnazard, I hope I'm saying that correctly. I do apologize if I'm not. Uh, Pejnazard also running into some troubles there, too, as he's brought down to 86. But actually, <laughs> Mirror pops out. They don't expect two players to be sitting back over here by jungle, so they're going to catch a kill. Great pop flash comes out, and Pejnazard, unfortunately, going to be caught out in the open there from that play. So Cassander finds a trade. He's going to be able to take him down. And now the CTs have regained control after that little bit of a hiccup here. Kills coming out left and right for Vegas. Squadron now. Diffuse already happening too, and of course Latcher finding the final kill over there in a Joker. They're going to be able to shut it down very quickly. And that's Vega picking up round number three here before we head into the first the gun round now. And here come the pickups. Joker, I'm assuming, is going to buy the op, and that is indeed the case here. Everything behind it as well because of the fact that they did manage to get at least two plants out of these three, so that's going to be a decent amount of excess sitting here for these guys. Really good, uh, really good buy-up here coming out from the T's now. It's not like they're missing anything. Sometimes you see these first three rounds go by, and they don't get a plant or anything in either of them, so that leaves them fairly low on money, but... Already here, we're going to see Kashander makes that push up towards middle, finds an opening kill over here on a Pejnazord, and that's not going to be the best opener once again here for the guys on the side of Team USSR. They've lost their control of top mid. They don't really have anybody else there to cover it either. So in terms of like intel and what they have going on there, it's not going to be the best. What's the good news from the members of the T side here is they do get a good little trade going back as they bring JR down to 32 HP. But this Nate from Murr is also spot on. Almost completely destroys Reitz, brings him down to just 5 HP. And now he's going to have to hold back here in a pretty big way too. But Nate's HE grenades is going all over the place right now. Another one connects onto the CTs here. That's going to hit JR now and force him back a little bit. He's brought down to 32 HP and he has to draw himself a little bit further away away from the battle for the time being. And again, now that they do have control of middle, they're trying to move some of their players inside of connector here to potentially allow themselves to take. They've also still have to move the bomb in, but it's coming through underpass right now, so shouldn't be too much trouble regrouping it just because of the fact that Vega Squadron not really resisting what's going on in middle, so they're just trying to hold a default spot right now, and they're waiting for the actual take to begin. Because it's in middle, though, there's a good amount of mystery being obtained here, but as they start their way off, this is going to become very, very obvious where it's moving into here, especially with the timer being this low. So the CT's going to try to hold it. There's going to be a good op shot, but again, JR takes some more heat, so he's got to fall back, but he's drawn the attention, and not only is he going to pick up another kill, but it gives Latro free reign to just pop outside a firebox and pick up the final one on the Joker itself. That could have been a second op if they wanted it, but they actually don't go for the pickup there on it for some reason, as Joker 
should have had it, but actually remembering back, I think he ended up dropping that up a little bit earlier on in the round and traded out for a rifle just for that reason exactly, as the round was not going to be looking so good with them already losing some of their players, and if they lose that up, then it's not going to not gonna pan out so well if they give the CTs the free double-op setup. So, 4 to nothing so far for Vega Squadron. Very convincingly indeed as well here, and for Team USSR, this is going to be a lot of work that needs to be done here to swing things back on this T side. Smokes, once again, all five for the most part. Maybe one exception on number eight back over there on the Joker. Gonna come in towards that A site, but Molly's be responded to here from Vega, and they basically block their path. Hedges are just gonna roll right through this once again, but there's Mir. He's ready for it. Back over here on Cat is gonna shut down one of these players too. Speed is able to move in and find the trade onto the site itself, but Mir able to find Speed. He's left out in the open, and now you just have one more left on the site itself, which is gonna be Mono. He's down to 44 HP, finished off by Latro, and now Joker is gonna have to try to hold things off, finding one kill. But the trades, far too strong for Vega, and combining that with the earlier picks they've been finding, so far not leaving a whole lot here for Team USSR to work for in terms of actually picking up rounds. The good news, however, is that they've been doing a good job of moving in and getting plants going here. So three out of five of these rounds, also you're looking at about 60% of the rounds so far. They've been able to successfully, at the very least, get into the site and get the plant going down, which, again, some teams do have a lot of trouble with that in these, some of these more uneven matchups here. Uh, they can't even get the plant down, and they're just stuck in this abysmal economy situation. But at least with Team USSR, they can get the plants down fairly consistently, and that is allowing for a lot more rebuys to come out here in a much stronger way, too. Whereas now you see not only the op on Joker, like we saw the last gun around, but he's got a lot of utility sitting behind it here. So he's already used the flash, he's already used the smoke, and he's still got a flash to use, well, another flash, I should say to use here as well, and they're going to work their way in. So the problems before with some of the smokes was it was like completely overbearing, but oh, oh Jared gets the double nade kill, picks another one up with the op over here in the mono, and I was going to say that the smoke setup was a lot better this time, but they're just going to execute them one by one anyway. There's Joker at the very least finding one kill, Speed finding another one, but they overexposed, they still don't have a lock as to where JR is, so he's going to pick up yet another kill. He's up to four kills already this round, one, two of them being just from a single nade dropped out there, and now it's just Joker, he's caught out in the open, Lamp is going to steal away the ace, but still a very, very impressive round coming out there from JR, stopping that entire Tire push almost single-handedly cold there in its tracks. And now that's its Vega squadron up for a very, very comfortable lead. Six to nothing. But Team USSR, they can't afford to eco anymore. Nor do they really need to, to be completely honest. Joker's the only player that's going to be left out of the utility game. The rest of them can buy up armor and everything else sitting behind it. So they're going to go directly into another buy off of that last loss here. Still not a lot of progress being made, though, in terms of the site take. They get in. They get the plan. The plan is often coming in just because of the rush situation of the smokes and whatnot that they use to actually get themselves into the site. Uh, but the main problem is just holding it. They can't really get into post plants a lot of times. We've really only seen one or two times where they not only took the site, but they were given enough time to get into post plants and whatnot. Um, a lot of the times they just take it. They don't actually clear out the site fully, or the rotations from Vega are just so quickly that they end up dropping things back out, and their opponents just left with their opponents are just left with nowhere to hide, unfortunately. So they come in, they retake it so swiftly, or they just again USSR just forces the envelope a little bit too quickly, and uh, the, C the CTs are able to retake it without ever even leaving the site. So one for one trade back over here in middle to start things off, but USSR striking back here. They're up to a two for one as Reitz finds his additional kill in a JR, looking for another one. But thankfully, Mir is going to be able to fall back successfully. Some good damage has been done over onto both Reitz and Mono as well, bringing them down fairly low. But Reitz with a good peek back over here. Over outside of Connector is going to find an additional kill and another one taking out Mir in the process of this as well. Finally, looks like USSR might have a round for themselves. But Lamp going to try to open up this flank right now. Moving his way over here towards middle to try and catch these guys off guard. I don't really think it's going to work out as well as he's hoping, but moves in, catches Mono at the very least. If he can pick up this kill and the kill from within side of jungle, which are going to be fairly easy ones to grab, he may yet have a chance, but he's moving in, not checking that left corner, so Mono is indeed going to be able to pick him off, and that will be Team USSR figuring out the round finally, and now they're on the board here, but of course with six rounds coming out here for Vega Squadron, and with them being as clean as they are, as you can see, uh, only a couple exceptions, I think the lowest amount of players they ever had in one of these was, was you know, three left alive, so very good economy built up. Unfortunately, not really going to be enough to where they can make it through like three to four rounds, like some of these crazy economies we often see where teams really take a lead. It's only going to be enough for one, maybe two of these rounds here when you take a look at the totals now, but it's another full and fruitful buy-up here, so USSR unfortunately not in the clear just as of yet. These great opening nades here allows Lant to put 40, finds one kill, almost finishes off another. We're going to see Pegasord comes out. He's able to pick off an additional player from the side of Vega, but JR finds the trade to it almost immediately after this, and that leaves things even into a three-on-three -three for now. Speed catches some over-aggression from JR to take him down. That's a free op for Speed if he wants to use it there, but I think he's just going to stick with the AK for the time being. Try to move into that site in the Bomb is slowly rotating over towards him as well. Mono with another peek over there from top middle as well. It's going to be able to take down Kashander. And now Latro moves in. Is going to be able to finish off speed. 
Now down, leaving Latro here in this one versus two. He's got a lot of utility to work with, but again, very, very low HP, so he's got to be careful. He is able to spot the push coming over towards the B site, so he's going to rotate in successfully to counter this one out. But it's all about picking up these kills. Goes past the window, so not going to catch the initial apartments push, but... As he moves in, he might be able to kill the bomb carrier, and there you go. Now he's got an easy one versus one. Mono's only down to 9 HP, and now the pressure shifts over towards him. Like I said before, too, a lot of utility still sitting on the Latro at this point, so he can basically just sit back, toss some nades back out here, prevent that plan from even happening, and just wait his turn. There comes the Molly. It's going to delay for another 5 to 10 seconds. And now Mono basically just hoping he, he, comes, out, he comes out there and he can bait out the kill, but not looking likely right now with the way Latro is playing this. He's playing it very, very safe, sitting back. Mono is going to go hunting for the frag as he pops out, but he's not looking towards it! And Mono actually does pick up the frag there, so the clutch from Team USSR, only with 9 HP left in his health pool there. And that's going to be the clutch, the huge save too. Huge mistake by Vega Squadron, thinking it was still on the site, but... Again, he didn't even have to peek that, to be completely honest. There was no sign it was even being planted. The bomb was still on the ground. Once he had seen that, he should have been able to. He could have just hid back and waited for his turn, but not going to be the case. These guys falter, and we're going to see a force up now from Vega to try to keep things in their court. You can see, we'll be a little bit limited here. They do manage to get three rifles out onto the board, but uh, one CZ sitting over here onto Mir, and as well, Latro back down onto a UMP this time as well. So, not going to be the best buy from Vega. Very, very limited on utility, but thankfully, they find the opening kill once again. JR looking for another one over there. He does get the spot on some players back over here in Underpass, but is going to take some hits down to 29 HP because of this. And now the rest of Team USSR again, really grouped up here in middle. What's interesting is they've actually kept the bomb down way over in the back alley right now, so they're going to have to send somebody to pick that up, but they're doing this now, so it shouldn't become too big of an issue. But with this mid control being maintained, the big problem that always has been for Team USSR is going to be getting outside of here, getting themselves into another portion of the map. And we will see at least the number 8 player over here, that'll be Joker, shifts himself into ladder room. Mono also catches some over-aggression once again from Vega, going to be able to take down Lamp and the rest of these guys too. They've got the watch on Cat, so if somebody rotates in from there, they can catch them off guard. But Joker as well, watching out for the push coming in from Window Room, and it's greatly played too. Team USSR are doing a fantastic job of just baiting out these kills left and right, using smokes and flashes really creatively to make it seem like there's going to be pushes coming in from these angles, but really they're just setting up for frags once, and <laughs> it's happened almost two to three times already just in this round alone. So there you go, just waltz right into the site, only one left alive. Extremely close on three of those players, 11 HP, 9 HP, and I think 10 HP on Aritz and Mono. So they almost managed to execute it, but a lot of these one versus ones just fail for Vega Squadron there with the unsuperior arsenal and with the lapse of utility, they're finally going to fall here and they have to go onto a full eco after about nine rounds of having pretty much everything they could have hoped for going into this. Vega Squadron are finally going to be smited here and they're going to have to go for a full eco. So a quick push out middle, no surprise at all from that on the side of Team USSR. They've been very reliant on this. What we do see that differently this time, however, from the side of Vega is JR has now pushed himself back over here into underpass and currently. Nobody from Team USSR is paying attention to this, so as JR just slowly pushes himself up towards this, there's going to be no indication that he's here right now. Speed does find a kill, but look at this. There goes the bomb. It goes onto the floor. It's going to be an AK here, and Joker's not pressuring it enough, so it's going to be a free pickup now for this player to use. Unfortunately, he's getting flanked as he turns around. There's Mono to shut him down, but still, the damage has been done, and now they have the bombs here, and with Latra still spotting a player in the apartments, I should be gratified in calling for more of a push over here towards middle. Unfortunately, again, those guns not working out so well. Pejdazord finding two kills back over here on a Kashander and Mir. Bringing it all down to Latra at this point. Hiding behind a smoke, so he's got a little bit of coverage to work with, but Team USSR are a little bit wiser about this. They're not going to push in towards that site. They just fall back, and they're going to make their way over towards A instead. And for Latro, not a whole lot he can do. Maybe he can get lucky and find a couple Deagle Juan Deegs, but we'll see in a second here if he can line him up. But he does over peak, and it's going to be Reitz to shut him down. So definitely USSR getting themselves back into this in a pretty big way. Now up to four points. Just two more away from tying things up. Vega, with that, just that one little save there, because, they're like we said, their money was still in a fairly decent spot for a long time, so they weren't completely out of gas. They still could have gone for, like, the Force Pistols and whatnot, but they were smart about it. They realized that those couple rounds were not going their direction, and that saving up for the full save here to get the op, full utility and all that in play, was going to be very much so in their interest. So this is what they go for now, and they're able to segue directly into another big buy round here, including the op on JR. We've already seen it do some work with this. It did fall short a little bit. It's kind of the start of the entire team. They kind of randomly just sort of dropped off here, and their potentiality to kill for some reason... They get very, very close, but they can't pull it off, so they're not going to be able to pull off a lot of this. So, for Team USSR, now they're going to be pushing their players mainly over here into the back B halls. And we'll see if they can make their push back over here into B from this point forward. Mir, along with Lamp, going to be sitting here trying to resist this once again. And you've got JR bouncing his way in. He's also going to be here to help it out, but USSR get a little bit skittish of this push. 
after that after that little bit of aggression comes out against them there inside of the apartments. They're going to shift more of their guys back over here to make the push onto the A site itself. And they'll just get up ready for this. 50 seconds left of the clock, so they still got a lot of time to play things out. But they're going to have to sit back and wait just a little bit here to try and throw off the members of Vega. We can see Kashander here. He's definitely looking for a play for middle. This is actually the first time in quite a while we've seen Team USSR just go for a ramp take along with... Uh, Excuse me, along with the palace there as well. So this is going to be a little bit surprising because it's almost always been coming from middle here before. But they're able to adjust to it very quickly. There's Kashana with the first kill. It's traded out by Joker though. And now they're working their way into the site once again here. Latro hiding from Firebox. Drops the bomb carrier. Sitting back, but he actually gets hit through the box once again. There's another kill. The push coming in there. JR though with a point blank shot. Picks up one. Finds a second on a mono. And now it's just Joker hiding out underneath the platform. Just has to take him down. And this round's all over. But Joker, they haven't actually found him out just as of yet. He's going to peek. Looking for this kill. Fails to grab it though. Brings down. 16 HP looking for another one it's about so so close once again but at the end of the day just not gonna be enough to execute some of these players so JR Mir and Lamp all gonna survive at the end of the round they keep that big op in play of course and now Vega Squadron they do maintain their lead back up to three points here this time and for Team USSR we are gonna see another buy coming out from these guys but it may end up being the only one as their money as well will end up being just a little bit stretched here a couple guys still sitting in a good spot you look at Reitz and Mono they should still be able to go for another buy even if this round is dropped once again but everybody else is a little bit under that point right now and they could go for the tech nine force up if they kind of want to repeat the same exact thing vega was doing but it just might be stretching it just a little bit too much there you need to be able to get those full buys we've already seen here how the ecos have gone for team ussr and just it's not looking so good unfortunately they're able to get those kills but they're missing that little bit of an oomph in order to clutch things out and actually take the round itself So again, Team USSR basically go back to the basics here in terms of their own strategy. Take control of middle, work from there essentially is the game plan. But a little bit different this time, if you take a look at Mono specifically, he's sitting here inside of the palace right now. He's actually going to sit here, probably actually waiting for aggression from Vega. But this is something interesting about Vega too. With the exception now of Kashander, and this may work out, these guys are not really getting aggressive. And even as Kashander pushes out the T-ramp here, you can see that... On the initial peak, he's not actually moving very much so beyond that. These guys are very, very hesitant and a very relaxed CT-sided team. They're more than inclined with just sitting back and waiting for their opponents to go for the push directly into them. So they're not going to want to take these risks. And these plays from Team USSR are not really going to pay out most of the time just because of the fact that, again, Vega Squadron is hanging back. And Team USSR also tries to play this very passive T-side where they wait for these kills to happen. It sometimes works out because they can switch it up all of a sudden and get aggressive onto them. And Vega Squadron just don't seem to be ready for this. But for the most part here, looking for these kills very early on, only brings the timer down very low and now puts these high pressure situations into play. There's going to be Reitz picking up one kill. We're now into a two-on-two -two after he finds this, but Latro pops back out, is going to be able to find Reitz. Joker very low here as well. Just going to, just going to get dropped by Kishander as he drops outside of the market window. Going to take him down. We have the full 10 second defuse, but of course, Kishander could have just had the kit defuse there anyway, so not a big deal. There's Vega Squadron, now up to eight points, but they've got to keep it consistent from this point forward because, like we said, Team USSR now up to four points. That's, that's not the worst situation in the world when you consider what you normally expect to come out from a map like Mirage here uh, a fairly CT centric map something like you know somewhere around between the 8 to 10 point margin there for the CTs often so if you're if you're if you're gonna let team USSR encroach beyond the sort of six point mark six point area there and get up to seven points now then that could actually get fairly dangerous so even up to even up to like six points I would say with the way the team USSR have been playing this I wouldn't really feel that they would deserve to get up that high on the scoreline Vegas squadron I think you would expect it for them to take uh, without at least in the early portions of this out at least with how dominant their CT side play has been, you would expect them to get up towards about 9, 10 rounds at the very least here. So letting Team USSR get further here, and this round is going to be a bit of an exception on this, is they're actually doing a fantastic job of hitting their way into this A site. No resistance at all from Vega, and Lamp's going to try to do his best to rotate, but as he pops out, Mono, that flash did not hit him as heavily as I believe Lamp was expecting it to, and that's going to be a swift kill coming out to once again give Team USSR another round here. So good picks up by pickups by these guys. Vega Squadron, money gets reset. Not enough built up, not nearly enough built up to go for another buy as you can already see here. So at most, we're going to see P250s and CZs coming out this time. Uh, JR is actually not going to buy anything, so we can save up just to go for that op buy directly after this round. And he's going to be sitting back, relaxing nice and easily now. And for Team USSR, this should be a very, very simple round. But we do have some aggression coming out from Kashander. So we might be able to cause some trouble. He's trying to look for the pop back over here to find Joker, but not panning out so far. Very well so far, as he's going to lose Latro on the first play. And Joker, thankfully, hugging that pole. We will see JR have a little bit better luck as he picks up this kill on the Reitz, but Pejnazor quickly trades that out with a plus one. And now, just Lamp, sitting inside of the window room. Not a whole lot that he's going to be able to do at this point. We'll work his way outside 
of Connector now to see if he can maybe drop the bomb carrier and delay this by a little bit, but it seems most of the lower players from Team USSR and really the only thing that would be an exception to this is going to be Joker. Uh, he's just going to be keeping himself underneath the platform where he should be safe. And again, Lamp playing that very, very patient game. Same thing that we see at the beginning of these rounds. More, more than happy with just sitting back and waiting for an opponent to walk by him so that he can be rewarded with a kill, but... Now the timer's getting a little bit lower. He's going to try to walk back in, but the easy shutdown comes out from speed there. And that will be the point coming out from Team USSR. So now they're up to six, and this could potentially set them up for a seven to eight half here if they can pick up this one. We'll see the buy coming out from Vega, but in terms of utility on quite a few of these players, uh, it's actually going to be limited. And for Mir, he really can't even afford a rifle when you take a look at it. He's able to get the Vamasan armor. And again, literally very, very, very little utility at all comes out behind this. Uh, just a smoke is the only thing he's going to be able to grab. And this is the story for most of the team, to be completely honest. They can get a smoke. They have to use some of them very early on to smoke off these spots. So that's actually going to leave them not with a whole lot to use here getting into the late round. And due to this, you can see they're actually going to play it very far forward, which is which is much unlike them. They've been hanging back. They've been wanting to take these longer range duels on the site itself for a lot of this half so far. So now for them to get all up in the faces of the members of Team USSR is going to be very, very odd indeed. And this could actually get very interesting if it pans out well for them, especially if they use these flashes to full efficiency too, if they're able to predict the push. But USSR, armor to the teeth, they've got everything they need, so if they want to use mollies and whatnot, they can do so. But, like I said before, the members of Vega are playing it super far up, so, you know, why would you molly inside a T-Ramp? Like, you're not going to do that. I think that USSR do have a feeling as to what may be happening, but they're going to walk in, and here's the nasty surprise, but oh no! We can't see Latcher pick up the kill! Latcher completely whiffs on his spray there, because Shander is going to be able to come in and pick up a trade, but again, Mono takes him down directly after after this as well, so this is going to put Vega down a man here as the take begins. Some good damage being done. There's going to be JR finding an additional kill, but you do have another member, Pejnazor, just sitting over here, hanging on the wall. He's holding things off. Mono picks up another one. Great kill from Lamp. He's going to be able to come in there and finds the blind kill, so that puts it into a two on two. Miro taking back in from Ticket Box. He's going to try to come in and help things out. Mono very low. If they can pick him off, they might have a chance to stop this plan from happening, but he is going to be able to sneak through with it. Lamp as well has got to be careful. He's down at 28 HP. So as they pop their way up, there's Pejnazor just finds the pop on that headshot out of nowhere. Mirror gets the trade. And finishes things off as well. So Vega maintained. They're going to take the 9 to 6 half and a great fight there at the end of things. And they're going to bring it up to their very, very good lead here on the CT side. And that's basically the typical scoreline as far as you would expect from Raz. At the end of the day, Team USSR do have some pretty good rounds sitting behind their buys. Um, just a little bit of a trouble of trying to establish that economy very early on in the half. And obviously Vega's running away with those first three and even the fourth gun round there as well. Uh, they just come up on top right from the beginning of it. And it takes Team USSR until like the sixth point there from Vega to really get themselves going. But they have a good four round streak from that point forward. Vega are able to strike back and it really reestablish their lead. But... Again, still some good pickups being made by the members of Team USSR, working against the disadvantages often thrown at you by the T side on this map, but they still end up coming very close at 9-6, to six, which is, again, not very too far off from what you would expect of a T side. You're very typical, so this is going to make an extremely even matchup jumping onto the other side, and actually puts some more pressure over here onto Vega, to be completely honest, because we don't know what to expect from their T side. I would uh, The CT side was actually very good, as I said before. They had a very defined style about it and whatnot. They were very patient. If they're able to pull off that kind of identity over here on the T side as well, we could expect some really good things for them here. So they're going to go directly into it. Everybody working their way through the apartments initially, but the decoys come in and they're actually going to fall back now a little bit too to work their way through underpass. Now, this might end up being predictable, but the toss on this is that they kept JR inside here to make some noise, but Speed spotted this, so this is the entire mystery of this play has gone by the wayside now. Now they know it's coming into the A site. They weren't really thrown off by it at all, to be completely honest. So there's Mono with the hold. He's going to be able to take down Mir. Pej the Zord finding one from underneath the platform as well. And we can see Joker's rotating in to help things out as well. Vega JR, however, does have this flank reopen, and he's going to move in. They don't expect anybody to be coming back in, so... Maybe a nice kill. He's going to take the headshot here. And look at that. Three kills from the T's. Another one comes out from JR. That has completely turned this round right back into their favor. Mono now going to have to try to take him down. But look at how low Mono's gotten now. Finds one headshot. Might be able to close this out after all for his team efforts brought so close. But JR looking for it. And he's going to find it. The complete turnaround from Vega. And they're going to be able to pick up the pistol round. Great play from JR. As long with the rest of the teammates here. Now that we're still alive in the later portions of that round. They execute those headshots left and right. Completely doing a 180 on terms of who was leading that round and for team ussr they're going to completely drop back down here now they're going to be left with a very very big disadvantage they're going to have to try to clutch out this four some way or another otherwise they're going to be left 12 six and a whole lot of work to do to get themselves back into this game and vega is going to have a very very easy time holding the lead on this t side pezna sword goes for that aggressive peak in the window but gets hit pretty heavily because of that drop down to 84 hp so not really going to be able to stick there for very long the rest of vega now moving themselves back inside of the apartments as well it's going to be a straightforward take coming out to here team ussr 
have seen this to some degree, but Joker, he's going to have to try to open up this flank once again. Coming down through underpass. We'll see if he can catch some of these players off guard, but they're already starting to work their way in. There's Pesha Zord. He gets the Juan Dig there. Takes out Lamp. Reitz is going to find a second one, but Latra Amir trade out those two kills. Now JR coming back behind some of these guys. He's actually going to be able to find the flanker, but he doesn't execute him. Joker picks up that kill, and now that's a MAC-10 in the hands of the CTs at this point. The rest of them trying to work their way back in here. It is going to be a two-on-three situation, and the bomb has not gone down just as of yet. It's actually moving inside of the apartment, so a little risky there from Latro. If he gets found out, the bomb is now on the floor. They're going to have to try to find a way to retrieve this, so it's just not a very stable hold, unfortunately, for Vega, despite them sort of bursting their way in. A lot of additional kills end up happening in the process of that, so as they work their way in, there's going to be Mir. He does manage to find speed, and now they're switching this up. They're going to go over towards the A side instead, and this should work out a lot better because the CCs don't have as big of a control. <laughs> However... Mono just shuts things down with that 5-7, takes out the final two, and indeed, Team USSR are going to strike right back, and this game will remain close for the time being. Now heading into this one, of course, we'll look for the eco trade from Vega now as they go for their own Tech 9 force up after dropping that round. They'll see if they can sort of really muck up the economy from the CT side, but again, USSR have gotten a lot of free guns, so even if they do pick up this round as to a response to the previous one, there's still going to be a decent amount of excess left for the guys in the CT side now, and they should still be able to go for another buy. So Vega, all in on the B side, a lot of smokes being used this time, it's been very direct previously, but not going to happen. Reitz finds the first one, Laughter trading it out, but Pejazord still with good control over here by the pole, he's going to be able to find an additional kill, and again, the take... Very slow from Vega. They move in, but they're not really moving as a unit right now. They're very hesitantly looking for single players to scout out some more of the members of the CT squad, and they are going to be able to do so successfully here. They lose one. JR finds the trade, but they're still down a player. Somebody needs to come out huge here, pick up two kills, in order to swing this round back into their favor. There's going to be an overpeek from Latro as Mono takes him down. JR again finding another one, doing some work with that Tech 9 right now, but still has two more to take out, and he hasn't found an upgrade just as of yet, and unfortunately looks away from that play there, so Mono is going to be able to take him down without any further conflict. Members of Team USSR pick up another one, and now Vega, they've got to go for the save here. Forcing things up, not going to be the best course in the world, and they need to make sure that they get those guns before Team USSR get too close. This should bring Team USSR within one point range of tying things up with Vega, but we will have to wait and see on this one now, because it will get very, very violent right from the beginning of this one. Joker's got that up. Already cleaning some of these guys up. Two kills right from the get-go here as he takes out both JR... Or apologies, uh, we see Joker cleaning up both JR and Latro. Mono finds two more as he peeks up from Connector. Lamp does end up taking down Mono. But again, USSR do close things out with only losing that one player along the way. And Joker immediately just spots that play. Too direct, unfortunately, from Vega. But with the guns they had, they weren't really expecting to do too much, I imagine, in that run anyway, besides maybe getting a play and whatnot. So this time, hopefully... A little bit more mystery can be eluded, and hopefully a little bit more of a mind game can be played from this T side, or they just go a little bit more directly with utility helping them out. Now the problem, not only this round, but some of the uh, some of the anti or the one anti that they did if they perform as well was, like I said, it was very straightforward. So it wasn't too hard for members of Team USSR to scout it out and figure out what was going on, and that's actually going to be the case here once again as well. They move into the back alleys. They're going to see that this play is coming to A, but it's a little late because now it's been started. Mir spots it. Joker finding a nice shot there with the op is going to be able to take down Latro. Might have even gotten some damage onto another one of the CTs as well. Joker is fairly low. I'm not sure if he's the player sitting up from Palace, but it almost looked like he lined up some of those shots. And nope, Joker is going to end up burn out there. My lamp takes him down. Now the rest of the team are trying to find their way out into the site, but they've got control. And uh, to be honest here, the CT calls, the CT calls is going to be probably to a save, especially as Pezzersword goes down. Reitz, there's nothing he can do. He's way back over here on the B site. And there's four players still to lie from the T side. So unfortunately, he's got no choice but to save here, as it's going to be pretty much impossible for him to retake that site especially with how much time has gone by. So this will be a retake now for the members of Vega Squadron. Again, keeping that lead alive, they'll bring it up to 11-9 in their favor. And for the members of Team USSR, we'll see if they have enough money to go for another buy. We have first round losing bonus, so it's going to be a little bit light, but kind of on the edge here. Reitz can buy a rifle for a teammate, so that can make up for Mono. Uh, Joker, Speed, and Pezzas are all sort of within range of being able to go for Vamos by the very least, but they actually don't decide to do it just as yet. They're going to save. They're going to choose their economy over a force up here. Which is good, again, a good choice being made here by the CTs, because the CT economy can often be very, very fickle. And if you make the wrong choice and try to force a, force yourself too much without good results, then it's going to have very, very bad consequences for you in the long run, because it does take a very long time to build that back up to a good point. So, for Vega, again, they should have another easy round on their hands here to bring things up to 12. But we've also seen some upsets, too, on these Ecos so, as well, so I wouldn't necessarily count 
Uh, Team USSR out of this one just as of yet, especially considering Reitz does still have that rifle along with a whole load of utility sitting in his hands for the time being. So Joker over here inside a window. He's going to hear some of this happening, but can't really contest it with just a little P250. The rest of Vega, at least some of them working their way back over here to get control of ladder room and cat. But they're very spread out. It doesn't really seem like they have too good of an idea as to where they want to take this push. They're sort of just hunting kills, and you can see it too. There's just a pitter-patter of players from both teams all over the map. So, as a, as a Kishander, apologies, does find one kill here. Pejas Lord is going to catch a trade. Pejas Lord is looking for the trade over here on the Kishander itself, and actually Joker is going to jump outside a window. Good patience from him. He is going to be rewarded with a frag over here going on a Kishander to take him down. And now Mir comes back in, finding another one. Now they finally solidified this push to come over here into the B site. Uh, but it's been an evenly traded out, and two of these AKs have fallen into the hands of the CTs now. So they have rifles to work with. No armor, so it is going to make it a little bit more rough, but they still do have a chance to potentially retake things. I don't think it's going to end up being called out to do this, however, as now they've got those rifles, and that could actually save them a whole lot of money going into the gun round, where before it might have been a little bit stretched. You might have been looking at a couple players not with full utility vibes and whatnot, and you could also just use Joker to roll right in here and... To be honest, Joker, like, if they had a kit in the if they had a kit on the team somewhere, Joker probably could have crept forward with that and looked for the kill on a JR as well. But that's gonna be Joker cleaning up at least two more. Not a whole lot of saves happening for Vega at all. JR's kinda gonna hide in the corner here and hope he stays alive. Hope that nobody from Team USSR decided to sit back over uh, inside of CT spawn. He does make it out with Yop, but this isn't really gonna do any favors for his team's economy when you just look at things. Uh, these guys are gonna be very low coming off of this buy. 3.6k for Kashander, and he's going to buy up another AK, so he's got nothing. Lamp's got very low amounts of money. JR is probably going to be the only player with a semi-decent amount. Mir and Latro, apologies as well, sitting down at about, you know, floating around that 3k marker there too. So they've got they've got an okay amount, but still, they've got to be very, very careful because they're maybe going to be able to get one more buyer out if they end up dropping to Team USSR here. And with how many free buys they've given them there, uh, Pejas are in speed now on those free AKs, and even Mono as well rolling with one. Uh, that is going to give these guys quite a bit of extra money here going into this round that they've used to buy up this utility. So a whole lot of mollies want them to come into play, and that's just going to restrict the push for that much longer. Thankfully, these mollies used very early for quite a few of these players, so not necessarily going to be in the correct positions just to hold off any initial aggression, because we have seen a little bit of this, but a great shot from JR comes over there through Connector. That's going to be able to shut down Joker, the opera from the CT side. And already here, progress is made from mid-control. Now it's about expanding it upon this. A pop flash goes way over Connector, though, and Mono, great job. Single-handedly takes down Mir. Could have had more, too, but doesn't want to over-aggress himself. Just sits back, playing it patiently. And you can see again from Team USSR, these guys are just concentrated on their initial push angles. They're just sitting back waiting. They've left B wide open because they think that this is going to be a play combined of a, of a, a mid to A push here uh, coming in for Ramp and the Palace as well. But they're not really able to confirm this as of yet. They don't even see that there's three players from the side of Vega Squadron. And they're all just creeping their way inside of uh, inside of the apartments right now to try to find an entry here. And you don't have anybody in the site itself. The closest player you have is Reach sitting over here inside of the ladder room. So as this take begins, it's free. They're going to get control of it. They will keep a lot of players live for the retake, however. And this is something that previously they've had a lot of trouble doing on Team's USSR side. The take has either just gone so swiftly, and thankfully, Vegas Squadron has chosen the correct site. But now they get a couple more alive, ready for the retake. Unfortunately, as soon as I say this, uh, we see two getting executed executed here. Pejazord, he's going to be able to find another one over on the JR, but so now as they work their way in, they've both been found out. Pejazord does get one with a grenade here, and Speed finishes off an additional one. He's going to roll, and he finds another kill, and they actually managed to pull that off, and they've got the smoke, so with a, combined with the kid over here on the Pejazord, they should have enough time to pull this off, and that's going to be an actually a really good two versus four retake that comes out there from Team USSR. Vega sort of falling by the wayside there. They should have had pretty good control of that, but they get in the way of those nades. The damage that they had taken from earlier doesn't really pan out very well for themselves as that nade comes rolling in and takes them out, and then the retake just comes in from speed and pedestal, or they just take it with absolute force. And Vega are not ready for this is all. Caught on the off angles, not looking towards the right spots, and unfortunately, although the plan starts out great for Vega, it falls apart very, very quickly. So Vega once again lining up for pretty much just a default A take here as you take a look at it. Uses are absolutely ready for this, however, but they start to rotate off of it since the play doesn't initially come in. Latro is going to find this opening frag over here to Pegasus Lord. Mono trades it back out, but there's Latro again. They keep it in their control. The rotations are coming out, and again, a very hesitant actual take here happening from Vega because they want to regroup with JR, but they still have this Aubin play from Joker, so they've got to be careful. And now they're going to fall back completely, which could work out good because of the fact that you look at exactly what a... Uh, 
you look at the fact that the smoke has now come out here, so they can't really see what's going on, but they've already realized, again, that there hasn't really been a whole lot of noise and whatnot panning back out. So Mon is going to peek. He finds this kill, and I think now they've realized exactly what's happening. But the rotation is going to complete. They have evened out the scoreline for the most part, but as they work their way back over here into this site itself, the plant should be able to come up. They're going to be able to catch Mono. Heavy cost of JR is helpful. He's down to 28, but they still managed to get it going. Now, again, though, this retake situation, which worked out great for Team US as our last time, is something that they're going to have to deal with once more. Joker getting ready to jump himself outside of the window, but going to miss that opportunity there. We can see them looking out here, but the hold just looking a little bit too strong, and there's Lamp lining up the headshot on a Joker, and for Team USSR, it just does not look so good right now. Reed's the other player after life. He is going to recover the out from his teammate, finds one more kill on a Kashander, but that should be about it. He's got to fall back now to keep it alive. And JR even lining up this opportunity here, too. A little bit over-aggressive with it, so Reitz is going to pick up this one over into JR, but Lamp, I don't think, is going to look out for this. And again, Vega pick it up. They come up to 13 points. Three more away from clutching out the map now, but still, the money situation is still going to be very, very iffy for these guys at this current point in time. 4K on a Kashander. He's going to have to spend a lot of that to go for this rebuy here. In fact, he gets tossed again because he's a little bit lower. Uh, for those that do buy, you take a look at it. Again, they're all either out of cash or they got less than $200. Lamp and JR have a total amount of $250 between the two of them. Uh, the other two teammates that have gone for full buys themselves are completely out of money. Kashander is the only player with a decent bank. Uh, sending Actually, no, he's even spent a little bit of money, too. It looked like he was at 3k post buy, but that's not the case. He only has 1.5, so between this entire team, they only have about somewhere around like $1,750 to use going into this uh, going into this round, and for the next round, of course, if they drop it, that's not going to leave a lot more else there. So Reitz finds his opening kill. Mir finding a trade to it, but Peshazor tries to open up this flank, not really paying attention to what's happening back over inside of the apartment, so Latro is going to be able to come back and find a fairly simplistic kill in order to take him down. He did do some good damage over here on a Kashander, however, bringing him down to 4 HP, but Joker okay, now looking for this peak and not going to be able to initially eliminate Kashander. This will give a little bit more, more room to this disease to try to push forward here as well. There will be Joker finding one, Latro, and Latro again finding some more kills. He's already up to 3 this time, and now it's just speed. He has a good flank coming in. They're actually leaving the site. No kid on the speed, though, but I don't know if he was fully committed to this and how he walked in. To be honest, there could have been a potentiality from the ninja this, but won't be happening. Vega, much more straightforward this time. Get into the site. Do get thrown off a little bit there by a flank, potentially, but but on the initial trades that happened going into it, a lot cleaner this time from the side of Vega. And now we're going to see the outcome back into play for JR as well. No more rifles for him. The rifles do come back into play for the team USSR. USSR. Uh, they've had a little bit of trouble maintaining this economy, as you would generally expect, and we can even see this one being a little bit stretched too in terms of uh, in terms of utility. They're able to get armor and rifles, but they're not a whole lot of smokes. Only two smokes after the initials have been used, and flashes and HEs are also lacking. No mollies at all in here either, but a good hold to start things off. Pejazord and Joker combo this with two kills. They just decided to get aggressive over here in middle. And they're actually going to stack this very, very nicely. They pick up two really great kills here. Lacho looking for a trade. He's going to find it over on a Pejazord. And now Speed working his way out as well. He's going to try to find Kashander, who's popped out back over here, just below Tetris. They find him, and again, the push from Vega. This oddly stun it all of a sudden here, too. They try to change it up, and... Team USSR here go for a little bit of a different strategy this time too. It's almost like they're like not expecting these rounds to be gun rounds with how aggressively Vega played that out there. But at the same time, it was also an extremely aggressive move from the side of Team USSR. Or USSR, apologies. From the side of USSR. Ah! <laughs> it's like a tongue twister I'm trying to say it that many times. From Team USSR. Uh, as they try to work their way out towards middle there. A little bit uncommon to do this on a gun round. So I think Vega are caught off guard by that just a little bit. And now, however, Vega, losing all their players, losing a lot of their players, I should say, and with the two that they do have left being on somewhat low health pools, Mir down to 26, and Latro sitting at 55, they've got to be extremely cautious with how they play this out. Only 20 seconds left, though, so... That cautiousness is going to fade away extremely fast, uh, just due to the nature of the fact that, well, they need to take a damn sight or decide to save here, because uh, they don't have any time to make this happen, and... To be honest, there's, there's no way Latra's doing this. He has to try to die now, and thankfully he does. That could have been absolutely abysmal if he didn't even die, and they just waited out the timer there, which they probably could have done, too. They had the angles to do that, but unfortunately, they do decide to pick their own safeties over that of uh, over the death of their opponent, and they do go for the frag over here. So he's going to make it out without suffering the penalties of the timer running out, but nonetheless, Vega Squadron finally out of money here. They are going to have to go on to... 
It's going to be another four spot round, let's be honest here. It's going to be another four spot round with the Tecton Armor buys coming out for at four to five of their players. And Kashandar actually is still able to get an A case behind himself as well with the smoke and a flash. So it's not the worst story in the world, you know, but you can see the signs of it now that they are running low on cash here at this point. And dropping yet another one is only going to have them on a two round losing bonus. So we're probably, with all the money that's been expensed here, we'll probably have to fully go for a save directly after this. JR, try to make some noise over here in the apartments. Not really working out so well in terms of trying to draw any rotation over here, and Reed's even doing some damage back on him too. He's already brought him down to 53 HP, so he's going to end up falling back inside of Connector here. Joker might have a pretty big flank and it opened up against him here in a moment. It's actually going to be Lamp that slowly just sort of sprays him down with the Tech 9, able to take him out. Mir flanking things inside of the window room too, now that they get a little bit more control of the site. And as they work their way in, the players from Ticketbox are going to try to strike back, but there's Mir. Gets a free rifle basically. He just comes outside of the vending machine as that little hole is for him. So he's now going to get another AK to work with. Mono finds a trade, but there's Mir catching Mono now. They've got control of Connector, and these final two from Team US. SSR, they don't really have to get very good position to work against these players on the T side either. Reitz, as we can see, sitting back over by ticket box. He is gonna be able to dink a Shander, but that's not gonna be enough to eliminate him. And now it's just it's now it's just Reitz over here as well. As the final player to live after he lost his teammate, sitting inside of the B side. He's looking to save, but they're gonna chase him. And Mir will take him down. And although we do see some good damage going on to the members of Vega, not going to be enough to eliminate them. And they survived that with four players left alive. And again, they recover a couple of free guns too. So we'll see the revives for those that don't actually have the upgrade stay cases of yet. And for Team USSR, this might be it at this point. Vega up to 15 points now. Vega, of course, if they drop this one, there is going to be a good chance for a swing back. But with CZs five and 5.7s five and not even one player having armor there, the odds are not looking so good. This is a good utility buy-up. But they've also taken a risk on going for a four-man stack on that A site as well. So unless they can all just burst out of there in a big surprise towards middle and completely swipe this push from the side of Vega, uh, they're not really going to be caught off too much guard by this because they're coming in on a flank to them anyway. Joker on the left could pick up a kill or two here as they work their way in. But there's going to be Kashander. He finds the first one. Now Joker can come into play. The pop flash holds them back. He spotted one player in the pot in the close quarter here. He's going to find one kill. Gets the second on Latro as well. Moving out to find a third, but Kashander picks up another one. JR finding another frag yet again here for the side of the CTs, but we do see the pop coming back out from Reitz. Going to find one more. JR and Kashander both extremely low at this point, so they've got to be careful. But at the same time, look at this. Fejazor just coming back out and finishes off both those players. The plant's not even going to happen at Team USSR. They're still going to be in this for the time being as they pick up the 12th point now. But for Vega, thankfully the money got to a good enough point where they can just force up on this next round here. USSR, it's going to be a decent buy up for these guys as well. You still have a couple guys floating a little bit lower on the side of their own utility. But comparing it to what Vega have brought into play, not going to be too good of course. Because you still have that tech nine on JR. Lamp along with Kashander both down to Galil's. So in a head-to-head -head battle here, just in terms of the money, Team USSR is going to be looking just a little bit better. But the entry from Mir there pops right out of Palace after the pop flash comes in. Joker hiding outside of Firebox, going to try to do some damage, finding one, finding a second, but he's dropped out by Kashander as well. The damage has now been completely thrown by the wayside, though, as Vega. They still have the man up at this point. Pesha's Zord is down to 25 HP. They have just found Reitz, I believe, but they actually didn't notice him. Kashander was sitting up on top of Tetris, but he didn't see him. Now Mir knows where he is, though. He's moved himself back over here on top of the steps. All they've got to do is pick up that headshot. He's trying to play this out cheekily, but it's not happening. And there's going to be patches where he finds at least one.